I want to tell Kenya Kwanza the current clamor to audit the 2022 presidential election I don't think is intended at realizing or finding out who won the last general election but it's just to acknowledge and ratify a position that we have election malpractices. We had election malpractice in the last election. And so, it is not about there are those who believe right and won the last election. That team is right. There are those who still believe William Ruto won the last election. They're also right because it is their political right. But the country should not be denied an opportunity to do a post-mortem on what happened. UDA are supposed to appear before the bipartisan talks this Monday to give and their memorandum of understanding on the bipartisan before the bipartisan talks. And Malala is saying this. Kesho tumepewa mwaliko maalum kama chama cha UDA na vyama za Kenya kwanza kuwakilisha memorandum yetu kwa ile bipartisan talks. Sisi kama Kenya kwanza na asua sisi kama UDA kesho tunaenda kuwakilisha yale mawazo yetu katika zile bipartisan talks. Ile kitu ningependa kuambia wa Kenya ni kwamba kama Kenya kwanza sisi tunaunga mkono yale mazungumzo kati ya Kenya kwanza na azimio tunaunga mkono 100% kwa sababu tunataka amani Kenya hii lakini jambo moja naibu wa rais ambayo sisi hatuungi mkono kwa hayo mazungumzo ni mambo ya kusema ati wanataka tufanye audit ya uchaguzi ambayo iliisha mambo ya uchaguzi ambayo iliisha tulimaliza tukaenda supreme court Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya ni William Samoi Ruto na haturudi nyuma we are not going to open that. So according to Malala we cannot audit the last general election. I'll be very brief. Just what is behind that U-turn? And why that is happening? Before that, let me remind you about uh Mwiti Edwin Mwenda. Uh, this boy here got C plus and was so to be admitted in Kirinyaga University to take a course in electrical engineering and computer with computer thing. So because of some constraints, he had not reported and he was supposed to get there in September. We are in October. So under the bold network, I was asking us to chip in in a little way. He's supposed to be taken on Friday. So I'm reaching out to you on behalf of this boy, at least a hundred bob challenge for those who can be willing to plug in and also those who can be willing to give other assortments that are needed, you're also um, invited. And thank you very much. Thank you. Because there is something that warms my heart when I see people break through, through this. I need to report that uh, one of our subscribers here has um, offered to pay the high school fees that was remaining so that will be offset by before friday so you're not just sorting the other part of it which will be first time fees i believe in the tune of 40 and then the other expenses that are needed here and there if we get a hundred thousand we'll be able to do that this will be able to be done so we'll be giving you updates as we go i started today so i'll give you updates on Tuesday morning, then on Wednesday, um, on, on Thursday, then Friday. So, um, things have changed. UDA no longer wants the audit of the last presidential election. Why are we calling it a U-turn? Someone might ask, did they refuse? I want to take you back to when the, when the talks, um, when the technical teams met, there was a push and pull between 
what to be discussed and what not to be discussed. And amongst the issues that were there was IBC, restructure, audit of the last presidential election, cost of living, party hoping, and all that. So, Kenya Kwanza even insisted that we can talk about everything, but on the cost of living, it's a policy matter that Kenya Kwanza is handling. So we don't want it to be on the table. Then they also insisted that the audit of the last presidential election should also not be on the table. But I think they decided to have everything so that we don't have push and pull. We put everything there. Kenya was not declined, election was done. So you realize that even the decision to bring, to invite the commissioners and Cherera and Chibukati and the commission to appear before that team, they were allowed to appear because to shed more light because audit of the last presidential election, of the last election, was actually allowed to be on the table. So that's why Cherera's came. Remember even before Cherera, IBC CEO Marjan Hossein appeared before the bipartisan talks team and said that they were ready even to open the servers for scrutiny. So IBC is ready. They are saying they are ready. And Cherera team gave their position. But despite of the readiness of the commission, Kenya Kwanza is still saying, we don't want that to happen. So, okay, it is the person, the custodian of the election is saying, I'm ready to, I'm ready for scrutiny. Why is the ruling coalition saying they don't want it to happen? Remember, their, their position on we don't want it, they have never reacted to the readiness of IEBC to open that server. But immediately Cherera and the team made their presentation before the bipartisan talks team, they realized that uh, we don't want to, we don't want to, um, we don't want it to happen. And I want to tell you why this is happening. That this u term has been affected by this. When you listen to Commissioner Cherera Masit Wanderi and Nyangaya, they all narrowed down the election mess to one man Wafula Chebukati. Yes. They are all blaming Wafula Chebukati for having ran the show one man. And I remember one day saying, Nyangaya saying, that there was supposed to be some live stream that chairman did not work on deliberately. That Form 34C that was supposed to be signed by the commissioners was never signed and the chairman never used the one for constituencies, used the one for county. So if you listen to all of them, they actually narrowed down to a full Bukate. So one of the reasons why Kenya Kwanzaa would not want this discussion to continue is because they want to save the image of a man they believe is the Kenyan Messiah of Fulache Bukate. Number two, the issue of elections is very emotive and is already creating hostility, government hostility. I listened to Irene Masset. You know, she was almost in tears. By then, she was almost crying. You listen to Cherera, the way she was saying her seven-year-old child was profiled negatively and social life was affected, could not even go to school. I remember Sid saying she had to take a border border to airport to escape because people were profiling her that she comes from Rift Valley, what is she doing, that she betrayed William Ruto, and she was in tears. So, already because of the emo emotions and the post-election actions by Kenya Kwanza, the way the team was hounded out of office, some were then pushed even to leave the country, it borders breach of human rights. So, some organization will start asking, why? And, and you know, I, I even wonder this, eh? Britain and these foreign countries, eh? And, and of course, to be specific, U.S. U.S. has been posturing in Africa 
as this big brother that is always concerned about democracy and human rights. I remember in Egypt, they even had to cut some military aid donation that they normally give the Egypt, the, the Egypt because there was breach of human rights. But why haven't America never asked William Ruto? Why should our former commissioners, former IBC commissioners, why must they fly out of the country? Must, why must they be in exile? And being forcefully, having hostility of even not being in your country is also a breach of human right. You will not be, I'll not be surprised to hear tomorrow or the other day also the same US and the Britain are actually finding IBC. Well, the borders that. So they've realized the way Masit was talking, almost crying, is already uh, spark, uh, evoking emotions. And these emotions are setting government, uh, government against the population. Now, that third aspect is this. The Chebukati factor. Immediately, Wafula Chebukati declined to appear before that commission. You know, there's also a possibility that just said, I'm not going there. What are these people doing? Wafula Chebukati did not want that discussion to go on. He realized, um, UDA realized, that Cherera team are enjoying dominance, and for lack of a better word, the scrutiny is the populace, the population is just going to get Cherera version. So they wanted to stop immediately because Wafula Chebukati cannot talk. And the only person, they were, it is Wafula Chebukati camp that can defend those results. And they might have realized that how did even IBC saying we are ready to open the servers could, be, could have been a blunder. And so they've realized that maybe the problem can be infiltrated by anti-government crusade to embarrass the state, embarrass Kenya Kwanza. So Chibgat is not there. And imagine, I wanted to imagine if we say no, we are doing scrutiny. So we want the commissioners to talk. Then you give Cherera and the team and, you know, even part of the commissioners, all the airtime, day one. Then day two and Chebukati is supposed to appear, Chebukati is not there. That is what happened. And they were found flat-footed. Lastly, the outcome of that process will shred root legitimacy. You may want to ask, and I say this, the outcome of scrutiny is this supports us to know, find more loopholes and make adjustments so that at least, even if you don't get it right, but you're close to getting it right. I was looking at uh, the current, um, I was looking at the current uh, grading system. There is approaching target, there is a reaching target, there is expecting, surpassing the target. So even this one, I don't know why people think that when, 22 results election is scrutinized, then someone is going to be denied a, a way. No. No one is going to stop William Ruto from working as the president. But the country just needs an opportunity to do post-mortem. But that is not what is not there. But I want to tell you this. Of all these points I've said, there is one I want to mention. Elections are very emotive. Today, I was in Jakaranda. So... While in Jakaranda, uh, I attended, I, I just went there, come on, Penzi Mskilizaji, just to listen to how those young people normally talk. And a gentleman, a Liamka, I think he's pro union no kopia kuna UDA na Kenya Kwanza, na enda zimio. So the UDA guy started talking ill about Raila. I'm telling you, weh, akasema, chereras are wrong, amefanya nini, and wah, I'm telling you, it's almost, almost violence there. The guy was almost being beaten and we had to come for his rescue. So that's what they have realized. Emotions are very emotive. And the more you Kenyans, there are people, because as we speak, both those who voted for William Ruto and those who voted for Raila Odinga, all of us are suffering. So realize that that debate is a debate that uh, when it's subjected to public scrutiny, even there are people that support William Ruto that will be against it. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that is my take on this, and I want to believe that Kenya Kwanza should not deny the country an opportunity to do that post-mortem.
एपोजिशन दो थैंक यू